Africa needs to be in space. There's no choice, mm. in my view. Um, being behind uh, in that area uh, costs African nations quite a lot. For instance, for communication, for telephone, for education, remote education to their provinces and stuff, they pay hundreds of millions of dollars rent to get the bandwidth from private satellites and so on and so forth. Even you know, if you look at that, it'd be enormous saving if they had their own communication satellite. And also now, with the miniaturization that I mentioned, you have uh, CubeSats. They're like a uh, 10 centimeter cube. Mm. And if that's one U, one unit. You can have a, a six U where you can have quite a few things in that you can is, launch. Is that why we hear when we, uh, for example, like Uganda sent a, a, a satellite to space recently? And, no, and Kenya. Kenya. Kenya did one. Yes. Yeah. Actually, what's different about the Kenyan uh, satellite, it was uh, built by engineers from a private company in Kenya. That's a departure from I mean, you know, all private government. sector uh, the private investment sector. in exactly. space in Africa and then, is happening. And was launched by SpaceX. Yeah. And so uh, there is, that's very early stage, but it should be encouraged. I think um, Af Africa is wasting quite a bit of resources in, in, through internal wars and stuff. You know, mm. I'm, I'm not saying it's only in Africa because wars happen around the world as we know now, but uh, leaders should make it every effort possible to avoid these things and focus on what's important for the future. It, it's, it's be, being present in space is, is controlling your own financial transactions, uh, controlling um, how you grow crops from space. You can map, you can see where mo moisture is low or high and so on and so forth. It's even important for national security. So it's, it's not a choice, you have to be there. And, and to do so, I think regional uh, <clears throat> cooperations yes. like Kenya has mm. uh, uh, on San Marco Island uh, a, a launch pad that Italians use. It's near the equator, as you know. When you launch from the equator, it's you get the the the, the Earth uh, rotates faster at the equator, so you get all that um, uh, uh, velocity attached to it. And so, you know, the launch could be in in Kenya. The the satellite could be assembled in Uganda. Um, the, uh, some of the electronics could be done in Ethiopia and so on. And, 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 and research just, happens in some other places. It's, it's safe. And yes, absolutely. Together. It's, not, so it's is that, not prohibitively difficult. Anymore. Right. It, I mean, prohibitive in terms of resources could be, but when you pull resources, I guess. Absolutely. But is Africa falling behind the space race at this point? Is that something that worries you? It worries me, yes. Uh, Nigeria has, has done several iterations of space launch. For instance, they, they hired an English company uh, that did their first satellite. They had their engineers go in England to, to work, but now they're gradually moving the control center in Nigeria and, and then doing some of the work in their own. So there's a lot of uh, not highly organized uh, Africa-wise, but every, uh, these countries are trying. That was Ethiopian-American space scientist Dr. Brooke Lako, Associate Director for Planning and R&D Solar System Exploration Division at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. To hear more of his conversation on Africa and space exploration, listen to Upfront Show with Jackson Vungani at voaafrica.com slash upfront.